make sure to enter into our prop bets contest for a chance to win $400. All you need to do is be subscribed to our channel, like this video and comment below and you're automatically entered in. One randomly selected commenter will win $400 if we hit all of our props. Good luck out there and let's win some money. Welcome to the Preset Podcast Props Edge Show presented by LineStar, your top five NFL player prop bets for Championship Weekend is finally here. Alongside Tyler Weeman, I'm Shannon Somerville. All of our picks today are available on the Underdog Fantasy app if you don't already have it. Make sure to download it and use our promo code for up to $100 of your deposit matched. The link to that is below along with the promo code. And yes, last week, two of five, so not our best. The lines are getting pretty sharp. Getting kind of tough here as we head into championship week. Not as many games to choose from. However, we think we found some edge this week on Underdog mm -hmm. Fantasy. So make sure to check that out. Also check out our Props Edge Plus tool on the Line Star app. It's where we go to find the best value in the prop market. Whether it's Underdog Fantasy or Prize Picks or just your generic sports book, it finds the best value for you. So check that out at LineStarApp.com. So we've got five best bets for championship weekend. We've uh, had a good run this season, though. We have. It's coming to Keep an it end. Keep it going. Better than the Cowboys season that came to wah, a... Wah, wah. Mm, sorry, Cowboys fans, but it does make for wonderful talking points on talk radio. And love to see some of these Cowboys fans melting down. It is oh. quite the... Quite the sight. The meltdowns are pretty great. <laughs> All right, let's get into this weekend. We've got some great games on the slate for the weekend, including the Bengals going to Arrowhead once again to play for an AFC championship title. And in this game, we are looking at Bengals wide receiver Jamar Chase over 83 and a half receiving yards. Chase is averaging 85 receiving yards per game. That includes the playoffs. He's gone over in two of the three games he's faced the Kansas City Chiefs in this one. In week 13 this year, he had 97. He had 54 in the playoffs last year. However, in the regular season game they played against Kansas City last year, he had 266 receiving yards against them. He's absolutely torched this Chiefs team. And now this year, they're not any better. 31st in pass defense DVOA versus opposing teams wide receiver one. We've been picking on this prop all season long. It's been incredibly profitable for us. So why not ride it into the playoffs here? Absolutely. And the Chiefs have gotten a little bit better protecting the wide receiver one. But I don't think it counts <laughs> when it's Jamar Chase. They're still yeah. bad at it. And we just got to go back to the well with what's working. Absolutely. Jamar Chase is one of those receivers where even if you cover him perfectly, he somehow makes a play on the ball and comes down with it. Zay Jones had 83 yards against the Chiefs last week, and Christian Kirk would have gone over. He basically dropped what would have been a 55-yard pass. So I think Jamar Chase, you don't, you won't see that with him this week going up against the Chiefs. Yep. Next up, we're going to Eagles wide receiver A.J. Brown, over 67 and a half receiving yards. Brown averaging 88 receiving yards per game. He's gone over in 50% of games this season. And one of the, I guess, Achilles heels for this 49ers defense, if you can kind of say there is one, it's definitely uh, the deep ball in this mm -hmm. one. They've been kind of vulnerable to it. In fact, fifth highest yards per pass attempt on attempts of 20 yards or more. You saw it a few times. Seattle's DK Metcalf had over 100 yards. CeeDee Lamb had over 100 yards. So what do you see for A.J. Brown this week? Um, and then also don't forget about Devontae Adams. He just mm -hmm. had a huge game mm -hmm. uh, yep. versus the Niners there. When it went to overtime. Exactly. So I, I think one, one thing is A.J. Brown's in a good spot. We know the 49ers' D is good, but they have allowed yards. They're 27th. Uh, allowing 181 receiving yards to the wide receiver over the last nine. So yards are something that's going to happen. A.J. Brown has the deepest A dot on the team. He's heavily targeted. I like the over here. And he's been popping off a little bit about his lack of targets. Yes, he was visibly, visibly frustrated on the sidelines. And in recent media interviews, he's came out and said, listen, I'm you know going to mm -hmm. ask for the ball. I want the ball. That's the competitor I am. That was kind of the sentiments he had, but as we've seen throughout the season, sometimes 
when squeaky wheel exactly squeaky wheel sometimes gets the grease so could mm-hmm. they go to him more i mean it is a playoff situation so they probably don't care if he's unhappy as long as they win however totally. given that and jalen hurts and him have such a good chemistry mm-hmm. it's just a matter of time before he starts targeting him specifically this last weekend i know he was frustrated however they didn't really have to throw the ball a lot yeah. they basically were just resorting to their ground game in that one this situation against the 49ers is going to call for an entire different game plan and I think that will uh, force Jalen Hurts to throw the ball a lot more in this one mm-hmm. keeping it with that game how about kicker Robbie Gould in this one we're taking 49ers kicker Gould over one and a half field goals made Gould more like gold he's been perfect in the playoffs actually since 2006 he was six for six in the Bears 2006 playoff run and he's been perfect since then four for four in both games in the playoffs this week uh, this past few weeks, and at least three field goals in four of his last five. Oh, I love this prop, and I I love a kicker prop here and there. You know, yeah. gotta give them some love too. I I love the prop too. I mean, it's playoffs. Teams are playing a little tighter. D mm-hmm. gonna be a little harder to get in the end zone, and. Gold is as good as gold, so exactly. let's do it. So especially coaches trust him. It's not like a mm-hmm. Brett Maher situation. Oh boy, <laughs> it was a little uh, risky. I don't think I've ever seen that before from a kicker that much implosion no no i i haven't but we're not going to see out of robbie <laughs> definitely not all right now it is time for your and my picks for props this mm-hmm. week tyler where are you headed in the prop market for championship sunday i'm going with a tight end who is six five two fifty we're going george kittle over 3.5 receptions he's been over in 67 percent of games this year But since Brock Purdy has taken the job and started week 14, he has been four plus receptions in six of seven. He is one of Purdy's favorite targets. And I think this 3.5 line is just too low. Lock him in for four plus. I'm also going to a tight end, but he is 6'4", 250. Not Mm. quite the 6'5", prototype of a tight end. I'm going to Bengals tight end Hayden Hurst over four receptions. Hurst is averaging four receptions per game this year. He's had four or more in 10 of the last 15 games. Last game, you might look at the game against Kansas City in week 13. He had two receptions in that game. However, he was ruled out in that game in the first half due to a calf injury. So don't take that one into account when you evaluate Mm -hmm. this prop. He's tough. He's physical. And last week we saw him hurtling Bill's defenders. He's been absolutely phenomenal this season when he's been healthy. And going up against a Kansas City Chiefs team that has – shown some susceptibility to tight ends getting some catches in this game. They rank 19th in pass defense DVOA versus tight ends. Evan Ingram for the Jags last week had five receptions. So you could see the Bengals lean on Hurst once again. He had a great game last week. It could continue here into the playoffs. So I like that four receptions, especially since you get the push as well in that situation, which it could easily end up at four receptions. Mm-hmm. We were talking Agreed. before the show, and and we pointed that out um, that that's a good line. Any you don't yeah. go four and a half in this one. If four and a half, no, no go. Yeah. Um, but four is right where we like it there. Yeah. All Three right. And a half or four. There you go. Hit that. Jamar Chase over eighty three and a half receiving yards. AJ Brown over sixty seven and a half receiving yards. Robbie Gould over one and a half field goals made. George Kittle over three and a half receptions. My Yak King, and Hayden Hurst over four receptions. I love George Kittle. He's just a fun player. Mm-hmm. The uh, WWE star of the NFL. <laughs> He's yeah. been fun to watch. The Forty Nine. That's going to be a good game. I'm excited for that. Heading into the uh, I guess both of them are. last week, I would have said Forty Nine ers would win this game. However. After seeing them, you know, struggle a little bit against the Cowboys, I'm yeah. kind of rethinking where where I'm headed here. Uh, I, I'm kind of leaning, leaning Eagles. Brock Purdy showed that he yeah. wasn't quite as good versus. Oh yeah, a and tough he'll be D. facing a ton of pressure. So, mm-hmm. good luck to you in all your sports betting this week. Remember, drop your plays on Underdog Fantasy. Where are you going in the prop bets? So, drop them below. If you have any questions, let us know and we will get back to you. Good luck. Go win some money. We'll see you guys next time.